Hey guys, this is Jarrell via Tesla's Tech, and I wanted to just have a quick video, straight to the point, on what is M8 Headless, what devices should you use for M8 Headless that are the best ones to recommend, and then just some shortcomings for you to be aware of, and also some resources that can help you along the way. So when it comes to M8 Headless, for what it is, essentially it is a music software. Uh, it was designed by one person, which is incredible, but originally it was for the device that he d designed for, which is called the Dirty Wave, the M8 Dirty Wave. Um, that is that device. Now, he was kind enough to have the software of that device available for for everyone else and it's considered m8 headless just because it's the software itself the nice thing about this software is that it's compatible with multiple devices including retro retro handheld devices so if you're familiar with ambernick pow kitty um uh, there's a few other companies as well but they have these devices that are run mostly either on android or on linux uh, that you can play old school games on but you can also put this software on it as well now to keep in mind when it comes to the ma headless you do need what's called a teensy which is a microcontroller specifically the teensy 4.1 in order to uh for to for the m8 headless software to run if you don't have this you're not going to be able to use the m8 headless software so just to be noted on that okay when it comes to the specific uh handhelds that i would recommend there's a few on the list for me just kind of out of the top of my head the rg uh 40 xxv uh, the the horizontal model, the RG40XXH. You have the RG4035XX. Also, there's an XX Plus, which comes with Wi-Fi. Reason for the you know the differences when it comes to that. Um, uh, there's also the Trim UI uh, devices, which are very popular right now. The Trim UI Brick uh, and the Trim UI Smart Pro. Those are all solid devices if you just want to pick up and play. So basically the least amount of steps to actually start using the M8 headless software, I would choose those. When it comes to those devices though, you do have to first put firmware onto them, a custom firmware onto them to be compatible to use with M8 headless. The devices I mentioned, uh, there is a there is a software called Newly, which is uh, I want to say it's a kernel for uh, that is a Linux based software. So correct me if I'm wrong on that. But um, there is a whole list of uh, those different images that you can burn onto those devices. I'll put a link into the description. But those are going to be that's going to be easiest plug and play because basically you just have to download the software, flash it onto it, and then you have to put M8 on there, and that's it. So I'll put this right. I'll put the links in the description for the specific steps and the information. Uh, so there's that. A lot. I do want to talk about the R36s just because that is one that a lot of people like to use. It is very popular, but there is a lot of shortcomings with the R36s. Reason why it's so popular that you can see it on YouTube and whatnot is because it's one of the first devices that was at a really cheap price that could do a whole lot and was very customizable. So if you are um, you know, if you like messing around with technology and circuit boards and soldering, you know how to do all that stuff and know the software component, you know, very, very tech savvy. You can customize the R36S quite a bit. Now, if you're someone uh, if you're someone that just wants to pick up and play, the R36X is not that. Just because for that device, it is not very reliable. I purchased two R36Ss. Both of them had issues with their headphone, with the, the headphone port, which is a big deal because if you're using software, if you're making music and you want that music to be casted out from the device into, say, if you're sharing it on Instagram or something, you want a good headphone port that's going to give you a clean sound out of the software. Sadly, it does not do that out of the box. So you might have to modify or fix or replace certain chipsets. But if you're someone who just wants to pick up and play, you know, install the M8 Headless software easy, not going to be the case. Also, when it comes to actually putting the M8 Headless software on there, it's not the easiest of ways. It's actually quite complicated in my personal opinion. There is a Rocknix image for it that has M8 built in, but I've realized when you do work through it and you play that music, it comes up very dirty and, and, and uh, it doesn't come out very clean. There's a lot of static to it. So just to be noted there. That's pretty much the main things. I'm sure there's many other people that have multiple other devices that will be compatible with it. I will let you know that the, um, the ROG Ally 
is a solid device and there's a couple of reasons why when it comes to the compatibility for me headless but i have that on me headless and it's great and then also too one of the neat things is that you can just have if you have the tc 4.1 you can just plug this directly into your computer and go to m8.run you can actually use the software just on your computer you can even use a controller to navigate to use it as well so again really fun stuff that is going to be my recommendation if you have any questions let me know i will have be having a how-to video soon on other ways to use MA Headless. Again, Jay Palatest, this tech. Catch you guys next video.